Okay, now let us talk about the most important fibrous protein uh, in our cell, which is called the collagen. So, in a, in any type of animal, whether we are mammal or we are uh, we are mostly in case of mammals, we can find this collagen, and uh, and most of our connective tissues will be disabled. Uh, in fact, all of our connective tissues will be disabled if we do not have this collagen. So, collagen fiber or collagen protein is a very very important constituent of a connective tissue which which uh, which present in bone teeth cartilage tendon ligament and the fibrous matrices of skin and blood vessel too so its uh, importance is enormous as you can see okay so so most of the part uh, actually most abundant protein this is this collagen is the most abundant protein of vertebrates because it comprising of 30 percent of their protein mass of whole body that means this is really really huge Im this has a really huge impact in inside our us okay now <coughs> there are a lot of different types of collagen as you can see the chain uh, according to the chain composition we, the, this will vary but normally the first thing i must tell you is uh, the general characterization of collagen so what do you mean by collagen in the very first place when you heard the name of collagen the thing you must print in your mind when you first heard the name of uh, collagen is it's a triple helical protein so it's a triple helical protein and it it is a part of connective tissue so it's a triple helical protein it's a part of connective tissue and it can it can uh, resist enormous amount of strength as you can know it present in our bone it present in our skin and ligament tendon and all this okay or even in cornea now if we uh, just go back here now let's start about collagen structure now what are uh, this collagens comprised of so as we know uh, it has a distinct amino acid composition as we know in for a normal protein for a normal globular protein there are separate types of compositions but for collagen <coughs> there is special type of amino acid arrangement and you will be you will be just totally surprised that these collagens are made up with three types of repeating subunit of amino acid and another surprising thing this amino acids what we are talking about most of them are not found in nature as normal uh, so they are the derivatives of normal uh, naturally occurring amino acids so they are modified amino acids instead of plain amino acids which uh, which we can find in inside the collagen fiber so this <coughs> these are slightly modified amino acids which are making the collagen fiber Okay, so normally the distinct amino acid composition for collagen is one third of these collagen molecules uh, are made up with glycine amino acid, another thirty percent of them are made up with proline and hydroxyproline residue. Most of the part often, so it is consisting of glycine and proline hydroxyproline residue. So hydroxyproline is the modified type of amino acid of proline. Okay, so now if we look at the structures of this uh, hydroxyproline residue, as you can see, we have a proline residue. This is the proline bulkier ring. So all this amino acid sequence will be the same. Only the R groups are varying. So the change in R group will change the amino acid type or amino acid uh, properties too. So in this case, what we can find at the four carbon position of the R group of proline, a hydroxyl group it attached. That's why you call it the four hydroxyl proline, and uh, when uh, this hydroxyl group is attached to the third carbon position, then you got the three hydroxyproline residue. Now, not only the hydroxyproline residue can be found in this collagen structure, but we can also find the hydroxylysine residues, as we can see in this picture. So, as we know, this is the R group of lysine, CH2, 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 CH2 four CH2 groups, and one NH3 at the end. So, this lysine in the third, this third position of this carbon. So, this is the carbon number five actually, and in this carbon, hydroxyl group is attached and uh, instead of H2 so it is called the 5 hydroxylysyl residue so this kind of modified amino acid can be found in proline and another important assumption in this case is that this this hydroxyproline residue or the proline uh, hydroxylysyl residue whatever modification we can find this modified amino acid sequences are produced after the synthesis of the protein so these are the post translational modification rather than the co-translational modification 
Okay. Now, if we look at the structure uh, or the arrangement, what we can say, the arrangement is done. Uh, for if we start from x, y, z, then the arrangement will start like this. So it it will start from glycine, then x and y. So three repeating units over and over and over is finally making uh, the continuous. You can see continuous 1011 residue of stretch of this collagen. So that that is really important because that is really interesting too because why they will uh, carry this glycine X and Y this is the structure in this case the X is often proline most of the time and Y is most of the time hydroxyproline so the sequence will be glycine proline hydroxyproline so repeating unit of glycine proline hydroxyproline why would they possess this glycine all the time most of the time and why they process this proline and hydroxyproline after the glycine residue to make this kind of structure now we'll uh, we'll look into the structure detail uh, in, in the below now if we see uh, by looking at the ramachandran plot that the collagen's three polypeptide chains which individually resembles the polyproline two helices are parallel and wind like wind around each other with a gentle right-handed helical structure to form a triple helical structure okay so what happens according to the uh, uh, when we study the Ramachandran plot of this only proline residue so if we make a polyproline residue and we add those polyproline to make the triple helical structure we can find in most of the time it is a sterical conclusion because as we know proline is having a bulkier ring so it's a sterical conclusion that they will arrange themselves uh, in a triple helical structure uh, uh, not triple helix in case of pro polyproline residue we, we have seen in case of double helical structure around each other to uh, to twist a rope like structure now this is uh, we can find in inside the, uh, by looking at the ramachandran plot the two polyproline amino acid that means a whole polypeptide chain is made up with proline residues will uh, will wind with each other to uh, to make a helical structure a rope like structure which is a right handed helix and they can make this helical structure uh, or rope like structure whatever we can say a double helix structure and this is will this will be favorable now what ha what happen if another helix will come and join uh, with the structure uh, is that will be uh, is that uh, structurally favorable or studio stereochemically favorable the answer is that only uh, will be stereo uh, sti favorable uh, the structure will be favorable only if the third kind of uh, um, Residue the third kind of polypeptide chain we are talking about is made up with glycine So that's why we need to have a repeating unit of glycine proline and arginine because the glycine is having a very very Small R group as we know which is a hydrogen So we if we put only proline residues uh, without being interval in, in in between them Then this proline will sterically hinder with each other and finally the structure will be disrupted the structure cannot be stabilized So to for making the structure stabilized we need to put other amino acids in between this prolines and hydroxyprolines to to bear, block them so as you can see in all the structure you can see the structure uh, on is a line diagram so it is not uh, uh, the, in this diagram we can we are not showing the di different hydrogen bonds or hydrophobic interaction that are present between the helix of uh, collagen uh, so in this case we are looking if, if we if we see that uh, in all these cases this prolines and hydroxyprolines are separated apart using this glycine so as you can see here one proline it is separated with this glycine and here you can see proline and hydroxyproline are right put uh, put it each other uh, just beside each other for separating them up we have two glycine in both the sides that uh, be because of the presence of two glycine in both the side of proline and hydroxyproline uh, that this structure will be favorable favorable or this structures will be will be uh, stabilized so we can see not more than three residues not more than two residues of proline hydroxyproline can be found one after e another as you can see in this picture so if we find proline hydroxyproline that will be one and if we pr found hydroxyproline hydroxyproline that that will be the one so we cannot find more than two proline and hydroxyproline interaction right beside uh, one another uh, without uh, the disruption of glycine in between them so whenever we can find this three so you can say proline hydrox so hydroxyproline proline hydroxyproline we must found one glycine in between them to make the structure stable that's why the e presence of glycines is really really important in the structure or holding the structure of collagen as we can know in spite of this uh, of having this hydrogen as a simple r group the glycine have uh, give us the enormous effect in making the most abundant protein for vertebrates which is collagen 
Now, as you know, as we've talked about this modified basis, this modi uh, not basis, modified amino acid sequences, this modification of amino acid sequences, as I've told before, it is uh, the post translation modification, and this kind of modification uh, can be done uh, by using an enzyme which is called prolyl hydroxylase. And prolyl hydroxylase will hydroxyl uh, proline, that means it will attach the hydroxyl group uh, onto the proline R group. Okay, so position of three or four carbon in the R group, it will it will attach the hydroxyl. Now, this uh, this for this polyl hydroxylase to act properly, it needs uh, the presence of other uh, factors or cofactors. In this case, the cofactor for polyl hydroxylase to work properly is ascorbic acid, or which is better known as vitamin C. So, the presence of vitamin C is really important. For uh, for the proper uh, uh, functioning of prolyl hydroxylase, and if the prolyl hydroxylase is not functioning properly, then uh, the structure, then the hydroxyl proline or hydro uh, residue cannot be made, and this this structure cannot be favored. So if we have only proline uh, groups instead of hydroxyl proline, that what happens? We have a restricted amount of hydrogen bonding interactions by providing this hydroxyl group to the fourth carbon or the third carbon position of the proline to make finally hydroxyl proline residue we increase the chance of making hydrogen bonds the chance of forming hydrogen bonds in between the chains which are making the collagen structure so the helix uh, which will finally make uh, the triple helical structure will interact more with each other via the hydrogen bond formation and thus uh, the, the the degree of interaction in between them will increase so as the degree of interaction will in increase the stability and structural integrity for the fiber will be increased that's why we need to produce this modified bases instead of norm uh, modified sorry modified amino acids instead of normal amino acids okay now let's move on here is a very good structure it is a fantastic uh, representation that's why i love void to discuss because uh, this because of this fine picture so as we can see the triple helical structure here in the in the left hand side so the three helix are wind with each other right handed direction to make this helix so so what happens in this collagen uh, if we uh, consider this one helical structure for each peptide they are left handed in nature but when they are arranging themselves they are arranging themselves in right handed in nature that is giving them the tensile strength enormous tensile strength to cope up with their own tensile strength so if they are having uh, they are making the, this coil in the left hand manner and they are also coiled in left hand so if the a force is applied towards the right handed direction all the structure will be destabilized at a particular moment that's why they are counter attack this problem by arranging themselves right handed direction so this helix on their own are left handed and they are arranging themselves in a right handed direction to make a very very structural stable structurally stable molecule which is collagen okay now this is a uh, uh, this is a stick model and this is another model uh, this is the interaction model so we have this three amino acid sequences which are interacting to uh, with each other via hydrophobic interaction sometimes via hydrogen bonding as you can see these are the oxygen and hydroxyl uh, hydroxyl groups this will make bonds with each other so this kind of bonds in between this uh, this helices uh, these three helices in there are bonds which are mostly hydrogen bonding and that's why again another important consideration will come up that if uh, uh, we need a very water uh, water free state uh, to make this hydrogen bonds so if water is present in between uh, this kind of interactions they will disrupt the water will disrupt the structure so now you look on the here the interaction uh, in this picture it is illustrated finely so uh, let's consider we have chains so chain 1 chain 2 chain 3 and again chain 1 so this is a helical structure that's why we are drawing it like that so we are not drawing a helix we are just uh, drawing it for the simplicity purposes that we can know the interactions so this is oxygen this is the hydrogen so they will interact the hydrogen for glycine uh, oxygen from proline or hydroxyl proline will interact so proline remember will not provide this hydroxyl for most of the time so they have to produce some some of the uh, electron uh, slightly electron uh, accept uh, proton accepting capability uh, uh, moieties and that can only be processed by attaching the hydroxyl group uh, form uh, by modifying those amino acids and that can be done by hydro hydroxy proline transfers as we know uh, so here we have 
O and here have hydrogen which will make hydrogen bonds. So you can see lots of hydrogen bonds are interacting uh, are being made in between them to finally make a very very stable structure. So not only these structures are stabilized uh, being stabilized but also uh, uh, the arrangement of themselves via the as I have told that left hand and right hand arrangement helps them to maintain their structural stability. But again if water molecule comes in then water will donate uh, the water will divide and it will give hydrogen and hydroxyl that hydro hydrogen is going to be for uh, going to make a bond between this oxygen and hydroxyl is going to form a bond between this hydrogen of glycine and finally destabilize each of this helix so what we have if we have if we add water and gently heat the structure it will melt down all these hydrogen bonds and uh, water will form hydrogen bonds with this uh, all of these helices and finally this helix will separate apart this helix will fall apart that's why this this, this is an important assumption in this case to to know that that this kind of interaction are very very important and that we have to maintain an hydrophobic environment inside so if we look at here uh, so not only we can find this uh, proline or hydroxyproline or hydroxylysine residue uh, on their own but we can also find this along with some glucose moiety so here it can uh, we can find the galactose and glucose it attached with this hydroxylysine residue we can find also this kind of modification inside but in uh, these are the very rare modification not all the time we can find this kind of modification now this is an electron micrograph of collagen fiber uh, fiber from skin so you can find in the skin how tight how strong the structures are actually as you can see this is really looking like a rope so th this is a really tight and compact arrangement uh, of each other to make this kind of bonds now if we go uh, below how these bonds will arrange themselves finally to make this coil structure so as we know this is a not a structure we have talked about so this is not a simple helical structure so the helix is finally interacting with each other to make this very very much complex structure how this complex structure is generally formed if we look at the structure using this lysine residue how lysine residues are providing uh, the platform for making a really strong structure of collagen if we look at here then we find the chemical interaction so this is uh, the schematic presentation if we look at this if we look at our collagen fibers of our muscle then we can find the here that uh, we have th here the lines which are really really dark we have the light the light bands the light bands we have few reg regions of the collagen we have dark bands we have regions of collagens too so the collagen fibrils with arrange so these are the triple helix they will arrange together one by one to make this kind of compact structure now oh, what is the contribution of lysine to make this compact structure so as we see two lysine molecules will interact together so we need lysyl oxidase which an enzyme which will uh, which will add uh, which will oxidize this lysine residues so both of them oxidizes the lysine as you can see CH double bond O again is C double bond O it is the oxidized uh, state of lysine uh, amino acid which is which is converted to aldehyde group as you can see CHO again in this case CH, uh, CHO in this case and uh, again CHO so it will produce the L lysine or aldol lysine so after the lysine oxidase reaction now these two aldehydes what, what are eventually called L lysines will interact together via the aldol condensation mechanism and they will interact together to make uh, a dimer of this lysyl oxidase to dimer of this al aldehydes to make an al lysine aldol now this al lysine aldol in turn will interact another amino acid most of the time it is histidine and histidine will interact with aldol al lysine and it will interact and finally make aldol histidine and this aldol histidine will interact to hydroxyl lysine or hydroxyl proline in this case hydroxyl lysine 5 hydroxyl lysine so it will interact to make a structure which is uh, called histidine uh, histidino uh, dehydrox dehydro hydroxymerodesmosine so <laughs> this is a mouthful of name so you don't have to memorize this name but you just know this interaction this reaction which is called aldol condensation so the importance of aldol condensation to make a very important structure of collagen and it will provided by the lysine and we have talked about the structure uh, the structure integrated provided by the glycine proline hydroxyproline which is simpler but again in this case this is also simple as you know two lysines are interacting and they aldol condensating with each other to make aldol lysine and this aldol lysine will interact to, with histidine to make aldol histidine and those aldol histidine will finally interact with hydroxylysine to make this compound okay 
So after making this compound, as we know, this is the biosynthetic path. We have cross-linking uh, these uh, fibers. Uh, what we talked about this uh, this collagen fibers. So not only the interaction, uh, the, those hydrogen bonds are important to to cross-link the fibers, but this kind of interaction also present inside the cell. Now, what is uh, the? Uh, I have a question to you that what is uh, the importance of cross-linking and why this cross-linking happens as the cell is becoming older. As the cell is getting older, the chemical reactions are going on all the time inside the cell. Remember, in case of keratin, we have told that keratin has a very, very important property that it is chemically unreactive in nature. But collagen is lacking that pro property. So collagen fibers are chemically reactive in nature. So what happens when collagen fibers present for a long time inside the cell? Inside the cell, there are lots of chemical reactions are going on. Lots of amino acids are going uh, uh, outside. So I mean, uh, those enzymes are there like uh, here. Uh, uh, so uh, aldol oxidase there are enzymes like that so those enzymes will interact uh, they help to interact between those lysine and all these different residues of collagen and finally turn the residues to interact to cross link with each other by production of this kind of uh, mm, complex molecules for pro producing this kind of complex molecules uh, utilizing lysine hydroxylysine and histidine which are present inside the collagen uh, collagen fiber they will stiff this collagen muscle so as uh, the muscle or as the uh, as, as the muscle is getting older and older there are lots of production of this kind of complexes lots of course cross linking are going on between those uh, uh, helices of collagen and that will stiff the muscle that that will constrict the muscle more and more that's why it's a practical application as you can see uh, the meat from uh, from a younger uh, younger chicken or younger goat whatever you can take is uh, is uh, very very tasty it's it's soft it, it's really really tender but when you take a meat from uh, older or much older me uh, uh, goat or something that muscle is really really stiffened that muscle is really really strong and really the, the tenderness of the muscle will gone so as the age as we age the tenderness of our muscle the the mm, uh, will go on the, the that's why we because of the cross-linking events that we have talked about okay because it, it is mostly found in tendon and uh, the muscles as you know okay now here uh, we uh, talk about again uh, the uh, disordered structure of abnormal collagen and why the collagen is important so now let's talk about so we have talked about the arrangement of collagen and the cross-linking of collagen and why this arrangement are important now here we have uh, the arrangement now another consequence of, uh, about this collagen uh, cross linking i must say so if we look at a uh, look from the economic point of view that we have to eat meat and we have to eat very tender and juicy meat then this collagen cross linking is bad but the collagen cross linking is good for that organism uh, from where we are taking the meat because if the collagens are not cross linked as we are aging uh, then what happens all this collagen muscles will be disrupted uh, all the collagen fibrils will be disrupted and that's why we lose our integrity of our muscle we cannot do a single job with our muscles so that's why the collagen cross linking is important it has a biological application it has a biological importance but uh, if we think about economical way uh, production of meat then it is not good for us so so buy uh, tender and juicy meat so buy uh, the young goat now if we think here the arrangement of collagen fibrils in various tissues then you can find inside the tendon we have a parallel bundle so collagens are present in parallel bundles as we can see in the previous picture the collagens are in parallel bundles to make this tendon on the muscle in skin we can find the sheets of fibrils layered together by many angles so it's a web like structure so it's going on here and there and here to make a mesh like structure inside the skin to hold the structure together and inside the cartilage there are no distinct arrangement is found so any kind of arrangement can be present inside the cornea of our, our lens we can find the planar sheet like arrangement uh, inside the cornea and inside the cornea we can also find a uh, very uh, uh, so planar sheet like arrangement is required and the cross ways are important so as to minimize the light scattering okay so that's why we, ha we found the sheet like arrangement in, in the cornea not uh, the uh, web like arrangement so arrangement is important uh, due to the pre uh, and, and, uh, irrespective of present of this collagen inside our fibrils okay 
now if we look uh, and another important thing is about the composition of collagen that it is made up with uh, glycine proline hydroxyproline according to the presence of amino acid types and the percentage of amino acid pr pr present a percentage of proline present percentage of hydroxyproline present will vary will vary the structural nature will vary their integrity purpose will vary their interaction uh, with each other okay so if we uh, look again in this picture uh, uh, and and we can see the importance of collagen as we know that uh, it holds the structure of cartilage, cornea, skin and all these things. Secondly, it helps uh, uh, for it to build our cornea and it, it helps to minimize the light scattering inside the cornea to see properly. And third thing, it helps us to make our muscle cells and produce the enormous power during our work and uh, these are the main part of making collagen and it will hold the cells together cell lines together really really strong okay now and and also if we uh, talk about uh, the the industrial uh, or economical effect of collagen then we can make uh, gelatin from collagen and you know we can use this gelatin as a solidifying agent in previous times it is used as a soli solidifying agent for culturing bacteria in inside laboratory but nowadays it is not used it is it has been substituted with agar okay now let's talk about uh, the abnormalities of collagen and how it leads to different types of diseases now we know the abnormality of collagen that means is the disruption of the structure of collagen that can be done if water molecule enters in inside uh, the chain interaction of collagen they will break this hydrogen bonds and as a result all these collagen fibers will be separated and uh, that will make an abnormal co collagen structure and as we age this kind of phenomenon is pretty common in nature Okay, and as a result of it, we have different types of diseases. As we know, it is called osteogenesis uh, imperfecta. This is a one type of disease which is called brittle bone disease. In this disease, we have osteoporosis type of disease. We have uh, we, we, our bones are between shivered, so uh, so some tensile strain in our brain, a uh, bone, and our bone is ge just getting cracked. So this kind of disease is really really dangerous, and uh, and also the the another syndrome we can observe here is this called. Allers Dun Dunlos syndrome, and also in this case are all characterized by the hyper uh, extensibility of joints and skins. This is because these tissues are contain large amount of elastin. So, uh, so elasticity is really high. So if we bend our hands, and then you can 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 fold it back. So th this is the type of disease uh, which generally threaten uh, the life. And we have osteoarthritis, arthritis, and all these type of diseases, which are uh, and we can also find uh, also have a malfunctioning uh, cor cortil uh, malfunctioning cartilage and all these things that will block our uh, day to day work and that will also restrict us for doing many things and also uh, our cell lining uh, is hampered as a result of cell lining hampering uh, it's, it's tough for us to it's, it's because uh, as we know these epithelial cells can give us a very good protection so our immunity power is also getting threatened so that's why the collagen structure is really important inside the cell so we have to make a healthy collagen and uh, that's that's all and I hope that's gonna help you thank you